Hello everyone and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. Today we are doing something a little different. This is actually a challenge that was sent to me by YouTuber Woe Bean, also known as Bean. They're an Australian YouTuber um, and it's a really cool challenge. Uh, I built it on this lot located here in the beautiful world of Henford on Bagley, uh, which came with Cottage Living. So a little bit of background about this particular challenge. It's for a family of Sims, uh, Darius and Lydia Armin, which is why the build is called Armin Lake House, but we'll get to more of that later. But they were looking for a, um, a nice modern family lake house home. Um, they're a loving couple who have just recently adopted their sixth teenager. Uh, so their former home no longer really met their needs. Um, so the challenge was to design a warm, welcoming lakefront home that catered to the needs of six teenagers that they've adopted, but also a nice peaceful retreat for Darius and Lydia as well. So as far as other parameters of the particular build, uh, there are three shared bedrooms for all of the adopted teenagers. Um, there is a parents retreat area, um, as well as other particular things such as like barbecue and fire pit for outdoor activities. Um, and let's see what else we have. I actually printed it out cause there's a lot to it. Um, but yeah, the color palette was supposed to feature things like lake blue, driftwood beige, forest green, uh, materials were supposed to include warm wood floors, um, nice soft textiles and natural hues and should incorporate elements that are practical for a large family while also being aesthetically pleasing. So yeah, cozy furnishings as well was a requirement. Uh, this house is also built with a budget in mind because the family only had 150,000 simoleons to uh, build their beautiful lakefront dream home. So as you can see, while I was chatting about all that, uh, the build took shape quite well um, and quite quickly. My whole idea is that it's like a mixture of two houses, like um, this area here that's like kind of risen above the roof line there that kind of juts out like a dormer. Um, that is what I would consider like a barn, like it was a former like stable. And then there was like an older farmhouse kind of very nearest to the horse stable or barn. Um, and then they had like a modern renovation. So we added this beautiful like glass area, which we'll see more of later. And then there's a like glass landing hallway area, which becomes the main entrance, which um, kind of connects the two pieces of the houses together. At least that's how it went in my mind. Um, this is probably the fourth time I'm having a go at this particular challenge. And it's not any fault of like, I don't know. It, it was all like, okay, one time it was the game's fault. So um, I had this like beautiful build, very similar to this, but not like a one-to-one -one copy. Um, and I was saving like all throughout, but then at one point it had been a while since I had saved last. So I thought, oh, I better go do that really quick. Yeah, well, the game got stuck in a saving loop. So I lost a bunch of progress on like what I had done and I was actually quite disappointed. So I took a break, uh, quite a long break actually, a couple of days on this particular build. Um, and then I came back to it. Uh, I started over like brand new um, because I was missing just so much. And at that point I was like, well, I might as well just start over. So I did. Uh, and yeah, I kind of had the same idea going, but I feel like this version is like the best version of what I actually wanted to achieve. So uh, I'm very happy with how it turned out. Uh, it's a very beautiful house, very spacious. I think it'll fit the entire family uh, very well. Uh, so as far as some other aspects of the build, um, it did come out to 143,937 simoleons, so it's just under budget. Um, 
But interestingly, when I placed it from the gallery, just to kind of like test on this particular lot, it actually came in at 154. So I didn't actually factor in the lot value. So oopsie. <laughs> but on the gallery, it does say 143,937 simoleons. So I was under budget kind of maybe. I don't know. Uh, it's built on a 64 by 64 lot uh, and it's seven beds so it can sleep seven sims. Um, and then there's three bathrooms in total. Uh, and again, I built it on Hanford on Bagley. Um, as far as packs, I am not going to list them all. Uh, there are 37 packs used in this particular build. I have uh, Horse Ranch and Lovestruck and like bits and pieces of a bunch of expansions, a bunch of kits, a bunch of stuff packs like there's just a hodgepodge of different items to make this house as beautiful as it is so um yeah a lot lots going on there um as far as the design uh the roof was a bit challenging but i kind of wanted to give that dormer area a bit of work and have the area be functional without the roof clipping inside this little area here is a double um balcony which kind of uh comes off the primary bedroom when we get to that part uh also off the kitchen as well um i don't think i keep these windows i think i used like seasons windows originally and then i come back and swap them out for the beautiful uh, horse ranch also i used horse ranch stairs uh, and a lot of the wooden beams and wooden columns with horse ranch and a lot of platforms. I kind of feel like the reason why I lost the build in the first place is because the version before this um, kind of had a lot of platforms going <laughs> with it. Like there were a lot to the point where I had a lot of different visual glitches, like lighting glitches, ceiling glitches. And I feel like the game just kind of said, mm, nope, sorry, I'm just not going to save this because I really don't know what to do because there's platforms everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know why, but, um, moving out to the front of the house, uh, I did a step up using uh, platforms and I decided to get rid of the steps on the back and kind of make it come around to the side because this area will be accessible from the dining room and kitchen area and it will become the outdoor space that has the barbecue grill, some seating, uh, some couches outside, uh, and then there's also going to be a like dock or pier that kind of juts over to that tiny little island you see in the pond which the pond I did do off camera and I did a couple of um other things off camera to kind of get the lot ready but I just used terrain tools and kind of manipulated the terrain and then you know slapping some water to a proper height uh it's not the best um <laughs> like I am not an expert with terrain tools but I think it looks like a beautiful lake I did try to match it as close as possible to the lake that you see like down off the lot in the world like it's surrounded by rocks and stuff which uh, I do add those as well they're also from the like live edit so I actually use the actual same rocks just to kind of make it look like it's another lake for this house for this lakefront house so yeah it's very nice I do love this like conservatory glass bit uh, extension off of the main living room. That is what I made uh, like the family's like hangout space. So there's like skill building things. So you have like the bonsai tree, a piano, um, a games table. It's like a really fun space. There's another fireplace down there. Uh, the living room itself has a uh, sunken kind of conversational pit, which was a requirement uh, of the clients of Darius and Lydia Armin. So uh, also on the first floor is going to be a study room, um, which is basically like a a miniature classroom. And that's like what I kind of pictured. Um, I didn't put any computers in the house now that I think about it, which is kind of bad. Uh, whoops. But um, there really wasn't a whole lot of space for that. But I guess you could always put a computer in like the study room at least on one of the like desks if if your sims feel like they really need it i did put laundry in here though uh but this floor plan actually does not stay uh i was trying to think like okay this is nice like the kitchen will go here dining room was supposed to go down on that like area that kind of steps down off there um like to those doors but then i was like that's just too small of a space and then like having chairs and dining table there just won't work so we do chop this place up quite a bit because the floor plan is just <laughs> my enemy basically 
Um, so things do change, uh, especially because I did take a couple of breaks in between building this because this is a huge house. Um, and also it is a very long video if you haven't already noticed. I mean, we're 10 minutes in out of a whopping 46 minutes. So I hope that you brought a snack or a drink or, or something and <laughs> are going to be entertained. Um, there's a lot to talk about. I'm not just going to talk about the entire build. There's some um, Sims news to talk about as well. So I guess we'll get into that. Why not? So the Sims actually just announced the other day, um, kind of like their roadmap of what's coming up with content for The Sims 4. So we have the Storybook Nursery Kit and the Artist Studio Kit coming on September 19th, 2024. So that's basically next Thursday. So it's, it's very soon here. Um, there are two new kits. So the nursery kit is like this beautiful nursery kit. You have a bunch of different like baby and nursery items. It's, it's really nice. I believe uh, a fellow simmer and content creator, Sixum, um, Sixum CC actually, uh, collaborated and worked with the Sims on making the nursery kit. Uh, and then there's the artist studio, which as you can imagine is a bunch of art artist studio items. So you have like painting supplies and, and new easels and everything. Um, and it, it's a really nice looking kit. Actually, both are. Uh, so I'll be happy to show them off. I will also be doing a giveaway uh, when I am able to. Uh, probably the, um, the weekend after, so like next weekend, like the 21st, I will announce the giveaway over on X. So it makes sure to, um, if you aren't already, uh, follow me over on X, which uh, there's a link in the video description below where you can quickly get to that. Uh, so you can follow me there. Um, so yeah, we're going to do giveaways of both kits. But that's not all that they announced. Um, there is a Love and Death expansion pack coming. The first look will be October 3rd, which is a Thursday, uh, 2024. And then the actual launch will be October 31st, 2024. So basically Halloween, which I think is really cool, which is kind of making me think like Love and Death, there's going to be like a lot of um, goth related things. Like, I don't know, not to say that it's going to focus on Halloween. Obviously, there's going to be like the death element to it. But um, what are you kind of hoping for for the expansion? Are you thinking there's going to be a new world? Are you thinking there's going to be um, like, I don't know, just more gameplay surrounding like love and death? I mean, it's kind of strange because we just got love struck, which is pretty much all about love. So the fact that they called this love and death is, is interesting, also intriguing because it's like, what more could they possibly do besides like more woohoo spots, you know? So... I don't know. I think in my mind, like death, the death aspect of the expansion now would be the time to like actually have like um, proper uh, memorial services for Sims or like funerals almost. I mean, even though Sims kind of, you know, die pretty quickly, like right on the lot and then Grim Reaper comes in, uh, you know, you know how it goes. So, yeah, um, I don't know. I kind of feel like they could do like some kind of like ceremonies around that. But but then I don't know, because it's like, is that too weird? You know, like, <laughs> like, I mean, it would be fitting, though, because that is like, you know, it's called love and death. So I, I don't know. Uh, that's just what's going in my head. You know, like, I was just like, what, like, what, what could they really do? But that that could be one. Um, I kind of hope they're not gonna like thinking about making the Grim Reaper like a playable person or something because he's actually fun just being an NPC, you know, like he just kind of appears, he hangs out for a little bit, maybe uses your toilet, maybe clogs it, you know how that goes. Or, you know, he doesn't really usually cook, I don't think, but I have seen things where he will eat food, but I, I kind of hope he doesn't cook and burn your house down. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I really don't know what they're gonna do. So I guess we'll find out October 3rd. So, yeah, I mean, I just had a couple of, like, things floating in my head about it, but I don't know. What do you think that they will do for Love and Death? Or what are you hoping they will do? Uh, as far as a new world, um, I kind of I kind of would like a new world, but I really don't know what the theme would be. Like, usually there's a theme that kind of uh, focuses on, like, like, a real life, you know, area. So... Could it be like a New England kind of uh, 
you know, like a Salem, Massachusetts kind of vibe, maybe. I don't know. I mean, that that is pretty like October 31st and Halloween, you know, like Halloween Town, the movie, for example. Um, great movie, by the way. But anyway, so old, but so good. And of course, you know, there's some, um, oh gosh, Hocus Pocus. So yeah, a lot of good movies, but um, I don't know, I, maybe, maybe. I really, you know, it's it's hard to say, but I think it would be cool to get something like that uh, and have something like that. But if you do happen to order or pre-order any of the new kits or um, expansion packs, make sure you use my creator code. It's just the Simified. Uh, here are some instructions on the screen where, um, you know, you can do that. Uh, very easy to use. You just put it in the checkout. And what it is, it um, gives me a small commission on any kind of pack sales, which go to support the channel, you know, um, buying any kind of like software I need or any kind of supplies like microphones, headphones, whatever, you know how that goes. So uh, it's strictly for the channel. Also can be used for giveaways. So make sure to use that. Um, it's not a discount code or anything. It just goes to support me as a creator. And thank you if you do choose to use it, but you don't have to either. Totally up to you, totally optional. Um, just use somebody's code, I guess. There's a lot of us that have creator codes. So um, yeah, doesn't have to be mine, but thank you in advance if you do choose to use my creator code. So yeah. Um, oh, I forgot to mention there's the uh, Reaper's Rewards event starting September 24th, which is a Tuesday, uh, 2024, I should mention. Uh, I believe that's going to be like a login events kind of thing going again, which mm, I don't know. Like it was nice to have some of the items, but I also kind of felt like, ooh, like I, I kind of missed out. Like I know you have to like log in every day, which is kind of fun, but they didn't call it a login event, but I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to be similar to that probably. Like that's what it sounds like to me. So I guess we'll find out, but. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to be. So, but like I like the last like event thing, I didn't get any of the cast stuff, but I did get most of the the build items thankfully. So that that's a plus. Like I did want want the objects and stuff, like the fridge and the trash can and everything. Like I wanted all that stuff, so I was very fortunate to get those uh just by logging in and claiming them, but yeah, I I don't know how I feel about that, but it is what it is. So it's still cool to have like the items and the events. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, uh, I'm interested to see what they're going to give us too. Kind of sounds a little like Halloween y, you know, like Reaper's Rewards. Like, I don't know. It's just strange. Makes me think of this uh, one like haunted attraction that I went to called Reaper's Revenge, um, which is very cool if you haven't been um i mean it is on the east coast of the united states uh but it's a very like big one there's like a lot of people that go to it and it's actually very good uh very good put together uh if you're kind of into that kind of stuff but uh anyway back to the build a lot of stuff to talk about but um I kind of was all over the place when it came to the build. Like I, I did a lot of furnishing and then like up to a certain point, I was like, okay, let's take a break from this. Cause like furnishing is just monotonous, like, especially in big builds. It's just like, oh my gosh, like it's never going to end. You know, like, not that I, not that I don't like furnishing. I love furnishing. I love designing spaces and putting things together, but when there's just so much of it to do, it's it, it can be a little exhausting, especially on the creativeness, you know, thinking of like different ways to put stuff together and how to design and lay out the spaces and what you want to use. Like there's just so much to think about. It's like, ah, too much. So yeah, um, it's nice to take a break and do some landscaping and uh, figure out how I was going to incorporate the lot into this particular area of the world and I thought it's great to use a lot of the trees and shrubbery that kind of surrounds it to make it fit because the lot border kind of like where it is there's like a lot of space still left on this lot and in fact in truth I probably didn't need to use 64 by 64 but this was the best location I feel for a lake house so you know like 
I don't know. It just, it just has pretty views. It's kind of up on the hills. You have like hills surrounding you and there was already a lake there. So I really did take care to make sure I chose like the best spot. Uh, this is the rocks going around, which actually took much, much longer than you're seeing here. Like it took me forever to do the rocks, but, um, you know, of course you get it sped up, so it's, it's nice and quick for you, but uh, it was very tedious to place them all. Um, but I didn't do it like all the way around the perimeter because I wanted your Sims to have access to uh, parts of the lake for fishing and stuff. And we do come back and add like effects like the fireflies and the dragonflies and the uh, ducks and swans and um, what else is there? Um, the little like log that has like a turtle that can sun himself on it and like the lily pads that can have like frogs hop on them. So very pond. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, or lake rather. I mean, this isn't like ginormous because you know, there's only so much space in the Sims. I also use the stone wall, which is from the live editor or the debug, um, which was kind of off the lot here. So I thought it was kind of nice to kind of reuse that a little bit there. And I was like, like they have pieces that have like parts of the stone kind of falling like down or like missing, like the walls like broken. And I'm like, I, I couldn't find those, but I do end up finding those later. And I swap a couple of the panels out to make it match a bit better with what's already running there in the world. Uh, and then something I didn't film, but um, I also kind of added that towards the front of the build with like open gates. So your Sims can kind of pass through. Um, and it's a nice little area because I was trying to do this like dirt path to kind of match like the world's like dirt paths that are kind of around here, but the terrain paint just doesn't have the right tint to kind of match and it just looks so strange. So there will be a stone wall going up, uh, which like your Sims will just, you know, walk around, um, which kind of makes like the front of it look really nice. Cause otherwise it just looks dumb, you know, like it just looks strange without connecting into like a sidewalk or something. Uh, so it is very tricky to kind of put that together, but I'm happy with how that is. So now we're back inside, back with furnishing. Uh, this is the primary bathroom. Uh, this is the primary bedroom wing of the house. So this is the, uh, the retreat for the parents. Uh, so this is nice, but um, I did finish the bathroom, but then later on when I came back to the build, I actually like, tore this whole place apart. Um, I kind of redid the floor plan to make the bathroom a bit longer, but also to give more space for double vanities. And I repositioned the shower in a better spot because it's just so strange how like it's kind of in this two by one tile room with a, with a, um, oh gosh, why am I drawing a blank on what that's called for real? Archway. There we go. Jeez, <laughs> an archway. Um, so I thought that was kind of nice to create like little shower rooms. I didn't use the glass shower doors that came with love struck. I did consider it, but I kind of liked the rustic part of the archway, uh, which is from horse ranch. It's just, it just ties in with like all of the columns and the beams already throughout the house. So yeah. Um, as far as the teenagers, um, bedrooms, they do have shared baths. Uh, so this particular one at the front only has like, it has two Sims in it and it's just, um, it's just, um, you know, it's just got one bathroom associated with where the other one is kind of split between the two bedrooms. Um, and then, yeah, I was going to float the master bed, um, in the center here and we do still do that, but this is where I kind of like, all right, let's, let's fix this up a little bit, kind of extend this out, bump this out, rejig all of the rooms in here because I just... I felt like it could be laid out a bit better. And uh, I was right. <laughs> it really could. Um, even though it does create this weird space in the primary bedroom there, I thought that was like a perfect space. So we do slide in a chair and like you have perfect view of the lake and like scenery. So it's like a good little reading nook uh, as part of the retreat. And then there is also some actual like, like a seating area. Uh, in the primary bedroom so uh, your sims can kind of just kind of chill out and get away from the chaos of the family and all the teenagers that they've adopted uh, so lovingly but yes so um, we do the vanity trick with just some wall cabinets and then I am just 
uh, alt placing some objects on there to make it look a little more uh, lived in. And deciding colors uh, was tricky, but we do end up going with this brown color. Uh, I do get rid of most of the green and this master or primary bedroom uh, closet, if you will, uh, does change. I decided to kind of reclaim some of the floor space for like a seating area. So uh, I kind of make it very long in this like dormer area and it actually turns out really nice. Um, and then the small like two by two space in the um, hallway there actually becomes a second floor laundry with with just like the two laundry machines and, and a clothes hamper. So it's like it's nothing spectacular because uh, originally the laundry was on the first floor, but I do change that out. I don't know if I changed that uh, on camera or not. Uh, I can't remember because it's just been so long. <laughs> but yeah, so then the the like room off the kitchen that has like all the appliances and stuff in it, uh, that is, um, it's just like more cabinetry in there uh, for your Sims to kind of prep. And um, I guess it kind of doesn't make sense for the flow though, if you think about it, like with kitchen flow, like the fridge is like in a different room to like your cooking you know, like the stove and stuff, but it's okay. I just, I just didn't want the fridge to be visible. I kind of wish we had like a fridge that could blend in with the cabinetry. Like, like you see in so many like house builds and luxury builds these days. Like, uh, I watch a lot of that on YouTube, so I see it a lot and it's like beautiful to have that. Like, can we please get a fridge that, that you just don't, see you know like it's a fridge but it looks like all the other cabinets that would be wonderful i mean i do love that the home chef hustle uh fridge actually like fits well with the cabinets of home chef hustle so like there's no like weird gaps or anything but uh it would be nice if like the front of it matched like the cabinetry uh, i do a custom potted plant here just kind of like alt placing and um you know kind of shrinking down a plant uh, in this like pot. So I thought that was kind of different, creates a new potted plant, um, in a weird way, but now we are working on the first, uh, set of bedroom for two teens. So this particular bedroom is for, um, Eli and Zane Armin. So Eli is the eldest one. He's supposedly 17 years old. Uh, he or she. They're non-binary, so that's interesting. Uh, but they love their music and technology. So I have a bunch of different musical stuff going in here, such so as like a DJ table. We have a guitar. We have a record player um, and just a lot of fun stuff going in there. Uh, the rooms are kind of small, so I didn't really get to cram it full with like a bunch of stuff, but I feel like they look so cool when they're all finished. Like they're really, really nice rooms. Uh, I did struggle here with Tool trying to get this so it wasn't like floating, but we do get it in the end. Uh, it's just those pesky decimals. But anyway, and then Zane. Zane is a bookworm and an aspiring writer. So um, he has like bookshelves and like a nice little space to sit and read. And he has also a desk uh, so that he can kind of work on his writing projects. I think it's a great mix of like tech and bookworm and music all in one room. Uh, this is probably my second favorite room. Um, and we'll get to my other favorite. Actually, they're all really nice rooms. Like I really went all out on these particular rooms and designing them uh, to fit the personalities uh, of each of the teen rooms. And um, yeah, I'm just really happy with how they all turned out. It's nice to kind of have this background of like who you're designing for and like what their personalities are like and like what they're interested in because it does make furnishing a little bit easier um rather than just doing like a straight up speed build with no idea like you're just kind of building blank for like sims that like exist in my head but you also have to remember that like it could be for anybody you know like any sim can move in here so it has to be a little bit more open and a little less customized but these are like fully customized to each unique sim uh, as part of the challenge. So just trying to find some more furnishing to put in here. And I made it dark outside really quick just so I can check on the lighting of this room because it did seem kind of dark. So we do add some uh, additional lighting in here and just some different accents. Um, I use these like 
LED neon shapes. I believe they're a high school year's like digital deluxe exclusive item or something. It's one of those like promo items uh, that they do. Like if you like pre-order early before the pack comes out or something, they usually give you some extra items. That's kind of where those came from. Um, and then we do the shared bath. Uh, so we have two vanities in here and then a shower and then the toilet is tucked in a uh, closet over there as well. And I did use the love struck shower, which is my favorite freestanding shower. I have to say, um, I used to use the university one quite a bit discovery university, but I don't know. Love struck shower is just much nicer. I like the larger shower head. It just looks so nice. Um, in bathrooms. So this is my, another one of my favorite bedrooms. Uh, this is for Lena and Maya. They are twins. They're both 15. Um, they're twin sisters. So, um, they have distinct, but complementary personalities. So Lena is more outgoing, um, loves sports, soccer, uh, Maya is a little more introverted, so she has a passion for like art and photography, but they share a deep bond and often collaborate on different projects. So this is their room, and I kind of mixed a bit of sports with um, art and photography. Uh, I do put a painting easel in here so they can get creative. I do the friendship bracelet kit, so it's like another little fun little project. But I think this is a very cool room. We even do some fairy lights kind of hanging around um, just to give it a little bit of ambiance. Uh, and then we have some sports equipment going on and um, kind of tucked away there as well because, you know, sports as well. And then we did like the sports balls and stuff. Uh, but very cool rooms. I opted for bunk beds in here to save space because this was a very tiny L-shaped room. And I found these really cool like wall butterfly um, lights. Not sure what pack they came with. I want to say they were like one of the stuff pack or kits. Uh, but I can't remember which one. Maybe one of like the like the parent related kits or something. Like one of the very early kits or stuff packs. Um, but I was like, oh, wow, these are cool. And I've never used them before, but I thought it just worked so perfectly uh, in this very customized bedroom for the twin girls. So very pretty room. I really like it. It's very cozy, I think. Definitely, <laughs> definitely hit the cozy vibes in this one as well. Um, and it's just such a cool shape, but very fun to design around and, and be able to kind of blend both of the personalities Um of the twins. So, uh, very, very nice. And they then have a shared, uh, bathroom in between them. So there's kind of like the two doors there. We have double vanities and double showers in this one because there's just, you know, two Sims in each room in this particular, like they share it. So it's nice to have the extra shower, uh, and vanity. There's no extra toilet though, but I didn't feel like that was like super necessary. So yeah, we use spa day tiling and a mixture of, um, gosh, what is that tile that came from get together? My favorite tile. I should know that that is my favorite herringbone tile to use. <laughs> so yeah, get together. Um, and yeah, I just kind of styled them very neutral, but I did customize them just a tiny bit with like the bath mats and stuff, but not a whole lot. So now we are putting together the last teen bedroom. And this is for Ava and Kai. Uh, they are the youngest. So uh, Ava's 14 and Kai is uh, 13. So Ava is an adventurer. So she's eager to explore and try new things. She was passionate about nature uh, and environmental causes, often spending her free time hiking, gardening, or working on sustainability projects. Uh, so Ava's room must have reflected her love of outdoors with plants and nature and inspired it decor so we definitely do that and wait until you see it it's so cool uh and then kai he's the youngest uh so um he's a budding artist with a quirky sense of humor so he enjoys sketching and painting and making his own comics so his room should be colorful and vibrant and filled with art supplies and his creations so i did use like the get together wall frames that i felt like uh kai could like put photos and and kind of you know put some different things up on the walls like that he likes for like inspiration uh, and then I do have the little painting crafting table there uh, I believe that's more for like toddlers but 
it's okay. Uh, I just, it, I, rather than put another Eastland, because there's like the Eastland next door that he could use, uh, I think it just works well, you know? Like, it, it just, it's fine. It has the painting supplies. Uh, I thought this nice backdrop that I believe came with Horse Ranch was just a pretty photo to add to the wall. Uh, and then the um, nature inspiration is definitely kicking off over here. We got, we, we've got plants everywhere, but I think it's a really cool side of the room. But I like how they both blend together so well. Um, you know, having like the painting and then the plants and stuff. It's just, it's a very cool room too. Like another like L-shaped room, but this time sans bunk beds. So there's no bunk beds, but uh, very cool room indeed. Um, definitely much more fun too. Uh, I do put a goldfish in there as well. And then for Ava, um, we do a like family garden outside when we get to like finishing up the landscaping. Uh, so that's another thing that she can do as well as like, you know, explore the lake. I also did a like beekeeping box as well. So a lot of different things for Ava to do and the whole family. So it's a really family oriented uh, speed build. So I opted for very like soft neutral colors in here. Uh, and we do more fairy lights hanging from the ceiling as well. Just over Ava's bed. Uh, and then we do like the star lights on the back of um, Kai's bed. So yeah, like up above there. Um, that is where I moved the laundry. No, I didn't move the laundry. I thought I did. I was finishing up the hallway up here, kind of putting in some decor, uh, but not a whole lot because it's actually a very narrow thing. So I just wanted your Sims to be able to kind of free flow walk down here. Um, and I do put a lot of space for family photos and portraits using the get together frames. So you can, you know, if any of your family Sims move in here, they have a space to kind of hang those photos and make it more personal. Even in the primary bedroom there, I have more frames and downstairs too. A lot of those frames, but I really love them because it's so cool to be able to add your own Sims, uh, framing and, uh, framing, framing own Sims photos into the frames. Let's try that, Arthur. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's been a long one. I've, I've been talking for 36 minutes now. So um, yeah, not to say that that's a bad thing. I, I actually really uh, enjoy it. Um, well, not talking, but I enjoy narrating speed builds. And um, I actually really missed it. Truthfully, um, I had a bit of builder's block also. So there I was working on a couple of different builds. But like none of them are just working out. Like I was trying to come up with like a different idea for a build. And then, um, uh, Bean sent me this challenge and I thought, oh my God, this is perfect. This is really going to break my, like, you know, my, my, my builder's block, but it did not. Um, because I had like all these different visions and ideas for a lake house in my head. And I tried to make all of them work. Like I was like, hodgepodging pieces together in my head and everything I really should maybe try and like sketch something or kind of draw it out maybe I'm no good at drawing so it'd probably just be a bunch of lines and squares just to kind of like I guess put room shapes together and and some different ideas like together I don't know but anyway I was able to obviously break my builder's blocks so we will be having regular content from now on um as usual once a week uh, you know, unless there's like some reason I need to take a break or something, but, uh, there should be regular content going forward. Uh, of course, unless I get builder's block again too, but I really hope not because it, it really sucks. Like, like I've bulldozed probably at least 20 different builds because like nothing was just, nothing was working. Like, like when I look at it, it's like, okay, this isn't working. And then like the, or the floor plan is like, like the exterior is beautiful, but the inside is like totally non-functional, <laughs> you know, like I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I just can't get it to work. And I tried and tried. So the one weekend we didn't have a video because of that. Um, and then this last weekend, um, didn't have a video. It was also Labor Day that first weekend too, the Labor Day holiday. So I was a little busy. Um, but this past weekend, there's just, it was again, a little bit more builder's block, but I was also very frustrated because I was working a lot on this build. And that's when the game kind of just said, oh no, I'm not going to save. So, so sorry. So sorry. So I had to start over. So I've been working on this one for a while. So all this week, uh, when I can, and I'm just so happy 
that I was able to finish it without any further game glitches and issues. And uh, I'm really proud of this. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It is available on the gallery as well. Um, you might have seen the pop out throughout the video, kind of like as usual, but all my builds are available on the Sims 4 gallery. My EA ID is just the Simified. And if you are still here, thank you so much for still watching. I know this was a long one. This is very unusual for me. Um, I tend to shy away from super duper long ones because I know that they can get boring, but at the same time, um, you know, I mean, there's a lot to cover and talk about. Like this house is huge. And I thought about breaking it up into parts, but I kind of just like to have the whole thing showcased in one video because it'd be kind of weird to kind of like, oh, here's part one. And this only shows like a bit of this and a bit of that, but I don't build in that kind of order. I kind of just build all over the place. So I like to show the whole thing from start to finish, uh, even though I'm kind of all over the place. So I just figured one video, a very long one. So thank you so much for watching if you're still here. I do appreciate your support. Very long one, but we are almost to the end. We have six more minutes um, and that's really not long. We are just finalizing it now. So I'm doing the outdoor space, which I did a bar, uh, an outdoor table for your Sims to kind of dine at. We have a bunch of different outdoor couches for your Sims to kind of chill on. Uh, we have the barbecue grill. And I was contemplating like an outdoor kind of kitchen, like with a sink and everything, but nah. I thought, let's just keep it simple. I think this is enough. It's beautiful regardless because you're right by the lake. You can't get any better, really. Um, I did kind of tuck the grill into half walls, so it's, it's not like just kind of floating out there in a way. It is like a feature of the backyard area. And then the beautiful like dock pier thing, I put the fire pit on, which was a requirement of the challenge as well. So... Um, yeah, just kind of finishing up a little bit of decorations here. And then the fun part is uh, terrain painting. I did toy with using one of the grotto waterfalls uh, from the Riviera retreat kit, but the rock color did not match with the rocks already around the uh, lake. So yeah, just decided not to use them. So now is my favorite part, terrain painting. But I'm really glad that the game um, did not like delete my terrain painting when I was like taking breaks. So I kind of want to say that that bug has been fixed where it no longer deletes terrain paints, but I don't want to jinx myself. So <laughs> I don't think it's fixed, but I would like to say it is. So yeah, it's just, it's nice to, you know, not come back to a speed build and have to do it all over again. So yeah, I did not film any of the rest of the landscaping, but as you can see, we have that beautiful stone wall out the front. We have the beautiful garden there. Otherwise, this video probably would have been well over an hour because I took my time kind of making this place look beautiful and decorated and feature rich. This is the floor plan of the first floor. And then we move upstairs. Uh, so this is the upstairs layout. You can see the primary or the parents wing is way off away from all the chaos of the teens this is the beautiful entryway that kind of connects the two spaces like in the beginning of the video i talked about them being like one's a barn and then one's like an old farmhouse so they kind of you know smashed the two together and you know did a nice modern upgrade beautiful house i'm super proud of it um, if you want to grab it it's called armin lake house can't believe i like didn't say that but yeah that's what it's called in the gallery is armin lake house basically the name of the video so yeah, not really, uh, <laughs> not really doing my usuals here. Usually I do talk about the name of the build and that you can find it on the gallery, but I thought it was just a nice time to have a little bit of a catch up and just kind of chill, talk about Sim stuff, talk about the build itself and not really focus on that. But yes, it is available to grab and for your Sims to live in. Uh, and it's only 143,937 simoleons. So it's not I mean, it is expensive, but like, it's not super duper bad. Uh, just use some other load. Shh, I won't tell. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is the upstairs hallway landing area. Again, it's that like glass area. So it's just like double floor. It's beautiful. Lots of natural light. This is the primary bedroom with that little reading nook. And you can see that 
beautiful view over the lake. You see the closet there um, is very nice and kind of in its own little space, but it's open to the primary suite. And this is the beautiful primary suite bathroom. I am really glad I decided to take the shower out of that closet kind of thing and give it like its own windows because like there's nobody around and privacy doesn't really matter in the sims so you know like it's great and then we have the beautiful bedrooms um very customized for all of the sims that are going to live in here or for for darius and lydia and their and their uh six adopted teen families so i really hope that they love this house i hope that you love this house um, and love this speed build. So yeah, it's just, it came together so well, uh, despite all of my challenges with it. Um, and then, um, this is the final bedroom and then we zoom a little bit around outdoors. Uh, but again, the bedrooms are just so cool. Um, again, it's, it's just so nice. Oh no, I left the Teddy in front of the door. That might be an issue. Whoops. Sorry about that. <laughs> um he, you can just move the teddy he's not supposed to be there he was supposed to be a decoration but i just forgot to place him where he was supposed to go so he just kind of sits at the end of the bed which also looks nice but it wasn't intentional so i guess i'm not perfect I'm not perfect anyway, I never claimed to be. But anyway, that's all I had for this video. I do thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Hey!